has been a hard week. Friends, this you know, in a hard time, the emotions overwhelm. We are anxious and afraid and, and feel an additional layer of, of powerlessness um, of being able to help be a part of change in our world with COVID-19. Yet in times like this, it's even more important that we gather for worship to proclaim a God so much bigger than us, than all of this mess and hurt we, we see. We gather to sing our praises, to receive comfort and challenge and hope, and to know even virtually that we are in this work of discipleship together. Especially in hard times, it's a gift to be together, and I'm so glad wherever you are at this day um, that you have joined us for worship. The, the bulletin can be found on the front page of our website, wpcdurham.org. There you can respond with readings and sing along with the hymns. This week, our music for reflection is a piece from some members of, of our choir as we all learn and, and adapt together. I think hearing their voices and seeing their faces will, be, will bring you great joy. Um, it did to me. Uh, Jim Ketch is our lecturer this day. Um, and, and we have the next couple of Sundays filled, but if you'd like to help share your gifts and worship that way, that would be a gift and you can send me a note. We will also share in communion, so make sure you have um, something to eat and something to drink as the Spirit connects all of our tables. And so friends, this day, this Lord's day, this Trinity Sunday, the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us together worship God. to worship using the words found in your bulletin. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, glory to you forever. Speaker, Word, and Breath of Life, glory to you forever. Font of Blessing, Living Water, Flowing River, glory to you forever. Compassionate Mother, Beloved Child, life-giving womb, glory to you forever. Sun, light, and burning ray, glory to you forever. Giver, gift, and giving, glory to you forever. Lover, beloved, and love itself, glory to you forever. Rainbow of promise, ark of salvation, dove of peace, Glory to you forever. God who was, God who is, God who is to come. 
Glory to you forever. Join me in our prayer of confession. Why do we confess our sin? Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But why do we do this together? Because we are a community, a covenant people. Let us then confess our sin. Let us pray. God of grace, love, and communion, we confess that we have failed to love you with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. We ignore your commandments, stray from your way, and follow other gods. Have mercy on us, forgive our sin, and raise us to new life, that we may serve you faithfully and give honor to your holy name. Amen. Please take now for a moment of silent confession. People of God, servants of Christ, enlightened by the Holy Spirit, you are clothed, fed, and sheltered by the Holy One. Know that every fiber of you is known by God, and be assured of God's desire that your prayers for mercy are heard and have been answered. In the name of the Holy Trinity, 
your sins are forgiven. Live in peace. Amen. I need to speak to the children for a moment. If you all, wherever you are, if you come a little bit closer for a second, and if you'd maybe tell your parents to, to pipe down for a minute, that would be great to have something to say to you. We hadn't talked in a while and a lot has happened. Um, we've all been at home for a long time. And while I bet some of the not going to school is not the worst thing for you, um, we know that people are sick. And this is a scary time and your parents are working from home, many of them, and it's a lot to handle and you know there's a lot going on and it feels really far away. I don't know if you're worried, but I am. And I'm willing to bet your parents are too. And the past couple of weeks have been even more difficult. I bet you've seen your parents watching the news and maybe some of the protests with a hard, sad look on their face. And there's a lot to worry about. Um, things feel pretty hard and us adults, we need your help. The story we're reading in the Bible today is, is the first story in the first book of the Bible, Genesis. I guarantee it's in a children's Bible that you might have. And so if you've got one around or nearby, I'd look it up right after this um, or after worship or later on today and look at the story of creation. It's God creating the whole world and night and day and, and oceans and land and then birds and fish and, and dolphins and rhinoceroses and parrots and sunflowers. God made all of it. You know this, God made all of it. And then after God made all of that wonderful stuff, God made people. And here's the key part. It's a really important part of the text. God says that people are made in God's image that there is something of God in you and something in God, of God in everybody you're with right now and in everyone you see. And us adults need your help. We need you to help us do better and help us be a part of making a better world where all people are loved. People, some people think less of people with different skin colors or where they're from or what language they speak and that is bad and that is wrong and God thinks that is bad and that is wrong and we need your help along with God's help to be a part of a world where all people are a part of things and all people are loved every day of their lives us adults really really need your help to do better than we've been able to do please help us Let's pray. Oh God, these times are hard and we are grateful that you are with us through them all. Give us courage, give us hope, help us um, be the ways you, help us be a part of the ways you call us to make a better world for every single person. In Jesus' name, amen. As we approach God's word, let us pray for the Spirit to illumine our hearts and our minds. Spirit of wisdom, help us to understand. Spirit of justice, call us all to repent and serve. Spirit of truth, show us the way, your way. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 8, verses 1 through 9. Please join me in reading the even-numbered verses found in your bulletin. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. 
When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our second reading comes from the book of Genesis, selected verses from chapters 1 and 2. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant, yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The Word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of every single one of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Many times this season, you can hear them right now, we've noticed the birds. Um, I was enjoying them so much from our screen porch that I did something that annoys my family, but I still do it. I, I find a book and I order it and I regale them with facts I'm learning. Um, a dear friend who runs a, a cool local bookstore in Birmingham advised me that what, what it's like to be a bird by a gentleman named David Allen Sibley was a good place to start. It's a book with, with pictures and shorter essays, kind of an introduction for folks like me. Um, so you can flip around and impress your friends and neighbors with the fact that the, the American robin can eat up to 14 feet of earthworms in a day. It's page 185. That the northern cardinal was named for the bright red color like the, the robes of the cardinals of the Roman Catholic Church, which is on page 186 right there. And that the, Car or that the Carolina wren knows up to 50 different song phrases and some marsh wrens know up to 200. Aren't you glad you learned that? It has felt like in this season of, of stay-at-home orders that creation is working or maybe had a little bit elbow, a little bit of elbow room to regain some of her own rightful place. We have set her aside, we have with creation, used creation to, to consume for our own convenience instead of seeing ourselves as part of this earth, as a partner, in, as, to be a steward of all that God has made. Um, it feels like creation has had a little bit of a chance to breathe. There's a, a chart on the screen that right now that shows the percent reduction in particulate matter. That's the PM 2.5 there, which can be natural like dust or volcanic ash or sea spray, but also there's also pollutants from power plants or vehicles. Um, New York over these last couple of months down 25%, LA down 35% more around the world. Um, the map, the second image shows images, shows the Northeast US showing similar drops in levels of nitrogen dioxide in that same period. The chirping of the birds, the reduction of greenhouse gases, the, the ways the glory of this spring have sustained me and been key to whatever mental and physical health I have retained, the love of our animals and the flowers blooming that make us nod as we hear Jim just a minute ago read this magnificent text, God saw everything that God had made and indeed it was very good. Good, good, good. Except when it's not. Except when it's anything but good. Creation may be having a bit of a chance to breathe, but George Floyd sure didn't. State of Minnesota charging documents citing the painful video you've likely seen portions of by now. Note a Minneapolis police officer kept his knee on George Lloyd's neck while Lloyd was face down on the street for nearly nine minutes. He whispers, I can't breathe. The officer kept his knee there for two minutes and 43 seconds after Floyd became unresponsive, after he was unconscious. heard the Reverend William Barber say this week in a sermon, calls a pastoral letter to the nation, which is outstanding. You should go look it up. Say that he, he recognized something in the officer's eye when he saw that stance, that knee down. He said he had seen it before when people go hunting and pose with their prey. The confluence of painful things churning in our world is, is, is like nothing I've experienced in my lifetime. A global pandemic, an accompanying economic crisis, the cultural and political turmoil, cities burning, protesters and journalists shot, grief and rage over continued inequality and, and policing, a president who has protesters tear gassed for a photo op in front of a church that didn't know he was coming, a church that had been even minutes before serving the poor and supporting the protesters because they felt it important for their protesters' cries for justice to be heard. 
there are too many things moving too quickly for me to keep up and the, and the energy required to do so is emotionally exhausting even for folks who look like me who don't bear the brunt of this personally. And that's at least part of the point, right? We have the privilege of options. Even when they are tough and life brings its worst at us, we have choices available to us that our black and brown siblings do not, have not, in 400 years since the first slaves were brought to our shores. It's a mistake to, be to believe, I believe, to see these protests or, or, or this wave of protests or even the last seven or eight years of this type of action since Trayvon Martin and, and Tamir Rice as something distinct in itself. All of it, it's really important to see the historical thread, how important and con connected it all is. 400 years of white supremacist racism that has in some way held every system in this country and every person. The system has embedded itself so deeply within, within our own psyche and we have worked so hard to justify these things to ourselves for so long that it's, that it's not really about race. Or that those disparities we see on in income and education are because, because they, and we know who they are, didn't work hard enough or come from broken homes. We sigh with, with paternalistic condescension. From slavery through reconstruction to Jim Crow to mass incarceration. Even now, these cell phone and police dash cam videos have become the modern version of public lynchings, violence, and humiliation for all to see. And we shake our heads and we go on living our lives. And even when we don't think about it, especially when we don't think about it, perpetuate the systems that entrench the power even more of people who look like me, who look like many of us. I sent you an email this week and challenged us to do some of our own work and not inflict our anxiety upon our African-American brothers and sisters and ask them to educate us. I challenge you to listen to the statements in that email and begin to read the resources Sign up for the 21 day challenge. Send me a note and tell me you have. I've listened to through that and some other places and read some things this week that have left me deeply conflicted and convicted. I'd also really be interested in what you're reading that you find enlightening. If you see things differently, I'd actually like you to tell me that too and then we'll find time to talk. This is hard work that requires a level of self-examination that is painful. If we're doing it right, it should be painful, but not near as painful as what our black and brown siblings live with each day. As we explore our own hearts, as we explore the impulses that make you lock your car doors in certain parts of town, as we wrestle with why we might be more concerned with property damage and rioters than a man that was just lynched in front of the world. I preached in recent weeks about how hard it is to know what is true right now, but the sordid racial history in this nation is undeniable. White supremacy is the air we breathe. In Genesis. Genesis 1 to chapter 2 verse 4 is known as the first creation story and is followed by a second creation story that has a slightly different emphasis. These chapters, as we know, are not eyewitness accounts complete with journalistic details and multiple sources backed up by scientific data. The creation story is God's people's first theological affirmation. God's people were in exile. After the city of Jerusalem fell and the temple burned, their, their religious and cultural home destroyed. God's home was gone and the city leveled and the leaders carted off to Babylon. This text is their first story addressed to exiles, exiles surely in a more precarious position than we are even now. For now, at least. And this text offers a daring claim. In the face of Babylonian power, the, the Israelites are daring to say to the world, are daring to say to them, you are not in charge. The evil forces of this world are not in charge. Our God is. They're daring to say that to the world. And when nothing else made sense, the people gathered to say that all creation belonged to God. And that God made everything we see and sustains it by God's grace. And that is in some strange and mysterious way, even when it's hard to see, is continuing to sustain it. And us. 
In verse 26, the, the part I mentioned to the children, God even says, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, which is a radical, radical, radical thing. Because if we, we believe this story in the book from which it comes, in the midst of God's people's first theological affirmation, the people were proclaiming that all people, all people were made in the image of God, the God who created the whole world. How amazing is that? I just let that sink in for just a second. You. Me. Every person with you now, your neighbors, co-workers, every person you see on countless Zoom calls during the week, every single person, Ahmad Arbery, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, even those we might resent or feel like we hate sometimes, no one is off the hook here. If all are made in the image of God, then we are bound by this God. Remember, this is the people's first theological affirmation. We are bound to create a world where every single one of God's children Every single human being you know and don't, every single person with COVID-19 who dies alone and everyone caring for them. So if our, so our work, if we believe what we say about this God, is to be a part of the remaking of the world for all of those people. For all people. To grieve the injustice that is real to sit with the uncomfortable t truths that we must not rush to resolve, but to listen and to pray. I'm gonna end this sermon here in a minute. And when I do, you'll see a picture of his face on your screen there, George Floyd, who seems to have been a remarkable person, though whether he's a sinner or a saint shouldn't matter at all. He couldn't breathe, the 6'6", 46-year-old man who called out for his mother who died two years before and was unconscious with a knee on his neck, the weight of evil for two minutes and 43 seconds. You will see his face and it will remain on the screen for that period of time. And I need you to sit and wait and look at him. I need you to look at him and not turn away, not get another cup of coffee, not stretch. I need you to look at him. Look into the face of that one created in the image of God. I know that you are needed. All of us are needed to end this painful, sinful, scourge in our land. All praise be to God. Amen.
join me in affirming what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed, the ecumenical version. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning, dear friends. Welcome to Worship with Westminster Presbyterian Church. We are truly glad that of all the places you could be, of all the things you could be doing, of all the videos that you could be watching, you have chosen to be here with us as we praise God and attend to the teachings of Christ Jesus. I hope that wherever you are, uh, you are feeling uh, blessed and connected and a sense of the presence of God. Our sanctuary is closed, but the church is very, very much open. It's so open that it will take you a little while to read through the entire bulletin, but I hope you'll do it anyway. Um, that way you can see everything that is taking place in the life of our congregation this week and this month and in the days ahead. There are a few items that you'll see in there um, I wanted to highlight right now. First, we are looking for a few new calling birds for the tree. Our community is working hard to stay connected while we maintain physical distance, and the calling tree is crucial to this effort. If you would like to learn more about how you can get involved in this ministry, please reach out to Reverend Sherry Henry. Additionally, we are looking for more volunteers to assist in fulfilling our commitment to our neighbors at Iglesia Emanuel as they continue the daunting task of distributing groceries every Wednesday afternoon. It is an incredible ministry that they have built and it is an honor to be able to work with them. We have uh, things that volunteers can do any day of the week. Uh, we can always use more folks, so if you'd like to find out more, please reach out to Sherry or myself. And finally, I hope that you have had a chance to read the congregational email that was sent earlier last week. The ugly realities of settler colonialism and white supremacy are on full display everywhere we look. And we as Christians, especially Christians who belong to a predominantly white institution, cannot afford to avert our eyes. God does not permit us that luxury right now. 500 years of violence is an overwhelming thing to confront. So let's do it together. We have some work to do, we have some learning to do, and church is the play perfect place to do this work and do this learning. Please take a look at the resources included in the congregational email, and if you would like to connect to discuss, collaborate, conspire, we hope that you will reach out to us. Our prayers for the week will be included in our liturgy for communion. To protect the privacy of community members, we have not been posting prayer concerns online, but if you would like to see that full prayer list, you can reach out to Sherry and she will be happy to get that to you. It's been our custom while worshiping online to take the time usually set aside for the offering to pause and reflect on how we can offer ourselves to God and to our community today, tomorrow, and in the days to come. Let's do that right now. Let us pray. Holy and provident God, you have blessed us with so much. Open our hearts to a spirit of abundance 
that we might live into an ethic of enough so that we can be a blessing to others and to you. Amen. Amen. And God said, It is not right for my children to eat alone. So Eve cut wood and she made a table so that food might be shared with others. And just like our grandmother Eve, Jesus was a carpenter. He too made tables. It was at a table just like this one where he turned water into wine. And it was a table not too different from this one that he overturned in the temple when he saw that it was being used for selfish profit and oppression rather than inclusion and fellowship. Christ sat at tables with the rich and the poor, with sinners and saints, with the broken and the hungry, with his mother and with his friends, even with the one who would later betray him. Dear friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. We come from east and west, north and south, to share this table with our God and with one another. According to St. Luke, when our risen Lord was at the table with his disciples, he took bread and blessed and broke it, and he gave it to them. And in this sharing, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table, the table of welcome, the table of plenty, the table of peace. Our friend and Savior invites all who are hungry to share the feast that he has prepared. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you praise, eternal and triune God. You spoke the world into being. Your word became flesh in Jesus Christ. By your spirit, you made us your people. When we were lost in sin, you found us, sending us your prophets and even your own son. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name, holy, holy, holy. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Born of Mary, he came to dwell among us. Full of grace and truth, he forgave our failures, healed our hurts, and gave himself in utter sacrifice for those he loved. After three days, you raised him from the dead that we might never die. Holy God, one in three, three in one, within the circle of your love, we are freed, we are safe, and we are loved. Here this morning, our prayers of concern and joy and thanksgiving. O oh God, you command us to live by laws that bind us in love to you and one another. Be this day with all lawyers and lawmakers. Be with law enforcers and law abiders, and yes, also lawbreakers. Give us discerning hearts so that we may understand and act in ways that allow justice and mercy to mutually reinforce one another to the greater good of your world, our souls. We pray especially for the virus of racism that is presently infecting our country. For those protesting injustice and those charged to protect and serve. For the lives of our black kin who long to breathe free. Jesus, dearest brother, kindest friend, righteous Savior of our souls, you came with saving love that did not abolish, but completed the law. We pray this morning for those in our midst who are in need of health and wholeness. We pray especially for those on our prayer list this day and those we now name in the quiets of our hearts. Spirit who prays for us in sighs too deep for words, who gives us words we didn't know that we had, who gives us a backbone when we need it most, who softens our hearts, 
Be this morning with all who face life's hardships. Be with those who dare to get into the weeds of life's problems or who are taken there against their will. Be with us as a church as we choose to struggle to be a beloved community with each other and our world. Holy, holy, holy. God, whose mystery enfolds us. On this bright and warm summer day, we give you thanks and praise for the grace of a summer's day. We thank you for any who, who have welcomed you by welcoming us, and for every time that we have welcomed you by welcoming others. For every evidence that makes us aware that we are members of your blessed family, dancers in your holy dance, hands in your knotted circles of love, we give to you our full and humble praise, O God of our lives. And now hear us as together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. God of grace, look with kindness on your people gathered in Christ's name. Send forth the power of your spirit so that these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ, in whom we have become your own. Amen. And now, friends, I would invite you um, or someone in your family to take the bread and the cup as um, Alex and I show you the, um, the motions and join us in um, these words of institution. On the night when he was to be betrayed, our Savior gathered with friends and he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you see bread, however bread comes to you, know that this is my body, and remember me. And later... He took the cup of wine and he poured it and he said, this is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Take this, all of you, to remember me. Look, friends, our Lord is coming to us in bread and in wine. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have put your life into our hands. Now we put our lives into yours. Take us, renew us and remake us. What we have been is past. What we shall be through you still awaits us. Lead us on. Take us with you. Amen. Amen. We have work to do, friends. To listen, to, to learn, to explore our own hearts, even in ways that hurt, and to be a part of the remaking of the world. And a world that lives up to that radical claim of God's people's first theological affirmation that all people are created in the image of God, and that only some of them have historically had significant advantage. If it's not for all of us, it's not for any of us. This world God created and loves. And so, friends, go.
And as we go this day, no, never forget it is good news that we don't go to do this work alone, that we cannot figure this out by ourselves yet still. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the friendship and fellowship of the Holy Spirit goes with each of us, with each of you on this journey together. And all God's people say, Amen. Oh, no.